everyone, we are live and welcome to the Coffee Chin Wag with myself, Jennifer Corcoran, and today my special guest is Stacey Keo. Is that how I pronounce it, Stacey? <laughs> you pronounce it far better than I do because it is an Irish surname. <laughs> But thank you for joining me. And for anyone who has come in today, this is the third one. You'll know it's been a bit of a journey. The first time it didn't work on LinkedIn Live, so I had to jump onto my guest Abby's feed. And then last week it did work, and then it stopped after four minutes, and then we got it working again. So I'm hoping today it actually does work. It looks like we're live. So if you're alive, we're going to be, I'm just going to be messing with a few banners and tickers today. So if you are watching, I'm sticking up one banner now, just let us know that you're watching or even if you're watching it on replay after just stick a comment in and we will come back to you okay so Stacy who is Stacy well basically I was part of a campaign in 2019 called F Entrepreneur and it's a campaign that spotlights women female business owners in the UK and it spotlights what they're doing in addition to like their business so how they're giving back and volunteering and all the good stuff that they do so I was lucky enough to be a part of the campaign in 2019 and then I saw all of the 2020 ladies being announced and I reached out and connected with them all and Stacey was one of them <laughs> and during lockdown they've been hosting amazing personal development kind of networking breakfasts and I went along to one and Stacey was there and she was chatting all all about the content waterfall which is her specialty and it's all about repurposing your content I know I've been guilty of putting things out on LinkedIn or any other social and thinking that's it and jump into the next thing so I haven't re been very good myself <laughs> at repurposing and I know Stacey's going to help you all to kind of get into that zone today because what there's no need to like reinvent the wheel again and again when we've already got the content so I'm just going to ask Stacey to give us a brief introduction about who she is i know she's similar to myself in that she comes from a country with a small population she comes from new zealand i'm from ireland she ended up in london i ended up in london and i've read on your bio you're a foodie i'm a foodie i love food <laughs> and you like the outdoors and i like the outdoors so we've got lots in common already but um do you want to tell us even a little bit about your agency brand Lective, and why you kind of created that and what you do Absolutely. Well, yeah, thank you very much for inviting me to join you today. Um, so I started my agency, Brand Lective Communications, nine years ago. So we've been up and running for nine years. Um, and basically, it was started off the back of an experience that I had had in the workplace. So I suffered three redundancies throughout the last economic recession, which is, yeah, really devastating. But in hindsight, actually, one of the best things that ever happened to me because it did push me into actually starting my own business. Um, but the reason for those redundancies really was that the industry that I was working within uh, never recovered. Uh, it was an industry that completely went digital. So while it was, I used to work in the corporate travel industry, um, it used to be that you would book with a travel agent, you would get all that kind of stuff done with an agent. And during the recession, that completely transferred online. And unfortunately, doesn't really exist anymore. So there was a fear, I guess, kind of inside me, which was, well, wow, if, a, if a job role or an industry can be completely wiped out like that, what does the future look like? And I wanted more control. I knew that I really wanted to kind of move directly into marketing. Um, and I, I, I guess I had an interim experience where I worked with a sales agency who also has struggled to move online and struggled to em embrace digital. Um, and I, I guess it put the fear in me. I was concerned that actually if they didn't, that I could end up in the same situation again more redundancies because they weren't sort of progressing quickly enough. So that was essentially where Brand Lective was born. I wanted to teach small businesses how to get online and how to embrace digital in a way where it doesn't need to feel scary. Um, it's not as overwhelming as people think, really. Like if you're running any kind of offline marketing, it is the same when you transition it online. And so our agency exists to kind of break down a lot of the um, jargon and all the we try not to use any of the acronyms and all the language that really does confuse a lot of people that have never been involved in digital before um, and so we help to raise people's brands online so everything from websites to social to content pay-per-click um, anything digital you can imagine we pretty much take care of um, and I particularly love those sorts of businesses that really do need to have a presence online and embrace this digital world 
I love that. You said so many things. My head's like. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> you've mentioned you've been redund made redundant three times not obviously that that's a good thing but i think you can definitely help people now because a lot of people are going through that and mm. i've been made redundant once and like you said it was actually the best thing that happened to me at the time it didn't feel like the best thing no, that happened yeah. to me but it actually gave me a kick up the ass to go off and upskill because i thought i don't want this to happen to me again so at the time mm. i was a pa and i went away and just did so much like microsoft training that i qualified as a Microsoft expert and yeah. I kind of upped my French skills from university and just thought I need to upskill as much as I can because yeah. there's going to be that kind of competition out there and yeah it definitely was the best thing because it made me kind of reevaluate what I was doing yeah um, I also love the way you're helping people to get onto tech and you're saying it's not that scary. And honestly, the same applies to this show, guys. I was bricking it from my first one. And you can see I've got a red neck. I get nervous energy before <laughs> I do these because I'm like, is it actually going to work? And I've been doing it three weeks now and it's getting easy. Look at me now. I've got the old banners going. I'm going to have a ticket <laughs> on soon. And I just think it's like anything. Once you start it, it's like riding a bike. You get used to it. Yeah. So see, we are definitely live, Stacey. There's loads of comments coming in. We've got... Yeah, I can see. Fantastic. All over the world. Look at that. Miami, London, Plymouth. I know. And my hometown, <laughs> Dublin. So Mara over there. And also Devin, a lovely lady from my masterminds joined. We've got London, Miami. Ooh, it's good. So thank you. And hello, Mandy as well, Southwest London. So I really appreciate you um, checking in today. I'm going to actually stick up another banner because yeah. today is all about this lady, the content award <laughs> expert. Um, so, Stacey, do you want to tell us a bit about your award, like your Waterfell concept? Because I went to one of your presentations, and I just say to everyone today, follow Stacey for sure. Look her up on LinkedIn. Look up her website. I can share a few links here as well. And she will have... Um, a slide kind of displaying the content waterfall x you know what it's all about and um, over to you i'm gonna let you yeah far better than me <laughs> okay yeah so the content waterfall basically this is a repurposing model that we use within the agency so um as a as a business where it stems from really is that as an agency we're working with clients clients have very limited amount of time right so that's a lot of the reason they employ an agency is to take that responsibility away from them and i was going through a situation where um i had a particular client who was actually based in london and wanted he was like i can give you an hour a month of my time so i was like oh okay how do we make this work so we started off by meeting with him once a month. Um, he would come to our offices and we would basically film him, interview him on camera. So we put a camera in front of him um, and we'd spend a lot of time coming up with the right questions to actually prompt him to get the insights that we needed in order to not only create content for his business, but then to also create his marketing strategies. So we had to do a lot of prep work in terms of getting those questions right. But then we would sit down with him for an hour, film him, and then he would go on his merry way and we would think, right, how do we repurpose this into as much content and marketing um, campaign um, collateral as we can before we're going to see him the next month? So what we would do is we would start at the very top creating this core piece of content, which in this example is um, the video. But you can also do it with something if you're an author of a book, for example, a book can be a really great asset to repurpose. Equally, if you're a keynote speaker and you have uh, speaker decks, like slide decks, you can use those to repurpose. But you want to start off with a really strong core piece of content. So we kind of we call that the original storm, the core piece of content. So then what you're doing is you're taking that original piece. So for us, it was sort of like a 45, 60 minute uh, video interview. And we will then look at repurposing that. So we take it into the second level, the second stage, which we call the big surge. And we're looking at opportunities here. What kind of long form content and short form content can we create out of that original video interview? Um, and there's ways to do this, right? So you, you've got the original video, you can strip the audio off that and release it as a podcast. Uh, you can also take that original video and chop it up into individual one to two minute video snippets, which then you can then use across social. So you might get sort of 10 little short videos, for example. Um, what I would also do with each of those little 10 videos, I would look at, right, how do we turn this into a blog post? Um, there's a quick way to do this, which is just to um, transcribe the conversation in those videos. 
Um, I like to take it slightly deeper than that and actually write a full length, you know, thousand to fifteen hundred word blog post. Um, add in all this, you know, juicy statistics and facts and, and juicy stuff that makes it really interesting. Um, so then all of a sudden you've got 10 blog posts. Each of those blog posts, I would look at chopping up into, you know, take out the five main points and you make those into little graphics images uh, that you can share across social. Um, for each of the blog posts you've written, I always tell my copywriters, like if I can't get 15 to 20 tweets out of this blog post, the quality is just not good enough, like get back to the drawing board. So um, it, once again, you've sort of got 15, 20 tweets that come off the back of that. Out of that original interview as well, um, I will have asked the right question to be able to pull out a case study. So then we can do a written form case study in addition to the video case study that we've captured. Um, we, what else would we do? We do things like um, uh, if someone's walked through a process, so just as I'm doing now, when I'm walking through this content waterfall methodology, we would take that process and turn it into an infographic because there's another visual form of something that people can actually share. Um, quotes, so if there's like, you know, he said something or, even in the blog, if there's a particular quote, we would take that quote out and make it into a little quote graphic to be able to share. All of those blog posts that you've now written could be repurposed into an email campaign to go out to your prospects. Um, it could be turned into a newsletter. It could be turned into a mini magazine that you can ship out to your clients. Um, again, if someone's to walk through a methodology or cut, you know, five points to do this or 21 tips to do that, you can turn that into a checklist that could be checked basically a lead magnet on your website. The options really are endless, like you can get really, really creative with this. So there's all these assets that are being created. Essentially for us, our goal is that if we can spend 45 minutes or an hour interviewing a client, we kind of set a benchmark of trying to hit in addition to 170 pieces of content wow. that can be redistributed. Yeah, it's pretty intense. Um, and now it's a bit of a game within the agency. It's like, how many pieces can we create out of this original, you know, interview? Um, and then we move on to stage three. Basically, we call that the major flood. And that is now that you've created all these assets, distribution, right? Mass distribution. Yeah. So where can you publish it? You know, you've got LinkedIn, obviously you've got LinkedIn blog um, articles, you've got posts, you've got um, Pinterest boards that you can put all those little graphics on. They index so well into Google search. Obviously, you put them out across Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Instagram stories. Um, if you're doing a live like we are today, repurposing that, stripping that off, distributing it across all your other platforms. Essentially, it's just about being creative. Like how how much can we rinse this piece of content for, basically? Oh, it's amazing. I, like my, I, I don't know if you guys know the emoji with the head blown. It's like, <laughs> wow, because I think we all have stuff, but I would never think of like repurposing it so much. And I love the way you just like batching it and the fact, you, you know, you can use it again and again, because we all will say it's like having clothes or I've nothing to wear or and then like you say, we have got content. It's, you know, if we're an author or if we've written an ebook or if you've got a slide deck or a presentation, you know, it's all in there and can just be like used again and again. And then, like you yeah. say, the secret is obviously distributing it because otherwise it's like, yeah, oh, look, there it is. Amazing. I've got it in a, you can't really see it very well here. I'll try to link to it in the notes, but there's a little, uh, JPEG we can download and it's, the key really is like the beginning piece it's really figuring out like what questions am I answering right like I, I go through as I briefly mentioned uh, I don't know if I mentioned actually I, I wrote a book last year called get online <laughs> um you, your head. you should show it to us I'm mean, yes. oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, so I wrote this book and actually this whole methodology is mentioned um in the second chapter of this book, it really digs into, and I've given some sample questions as well that people can use to help get them started. Because I think that's the biggest bit. It's like, what do I talk about? Yeah. Um, for me, it's it's start with problems. Start with what are your what are your customers struggling with? You know, what sort of problems do they have? Um, because if you can really get into the root of a problem, problem it sounds really negative, but actually, yeah. people are motivated by pain right? People will make decisions based on pain. Yeah. So if you look at what challenges are they suffering? How do you actually solve those problems? But focus more on them, focus all about them and how you know, that you understand that problem rather than just like, here's the solution, because we don't really want to be sold to all the time. But we want 
gritty content that really demonstrates we understand you. We understand the challenges that you have. I'm just I'm quickly looking at the comments and I can see, I don't know how you pronounce it, whether it's Ari or Ari, he's got the little mind blown emoji as well. And I completely no, yeah. agree. Um, and I love that you I I love that you're mentioning pain points. And I used to kind of hide from talking about pain points. Probably I'm only really getting into it this year because I just thought, oh, I don't want to touch on people's pain points and make them feel bad about how they're not using LinkedIn. But like you said, you really need to because that's how they're going to emotionally connect to you. And that's how you're going to be able to help them as well. Because if you don't talk about the problems, you can't talk about how you're going to help them to fix the problems. And um, a lot of people just do the kind of solution, 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 me, me, me. But they don't really dig deep so that people can see themselves and go, well, that's actually me and I need yeah. help with that. Yeah. So I love that you're saying that and it's something I need to get to grips to with, sorry. And I was going to ask you, when you do your questionnaire to your clients before yeah. they do that um, hour or whatever, like how exhaustive is that questionnaire? How long do you think it, it takes them to, to go through it? Well, I will... Mo <laughs> very often quite don't love me for this but will not talk to them about it before actually doing it and yeah. the reason for that that can be a challenge sometimes if people get really weird in front of a camera but the reason I say that is we we crave realness and that raw example of just the way that people are speaking and I think we're a little bit over the polished perfectly curated content it yeah. just doesn't resonate I think people are you know think about this we're doing a live right now this is the type of thing where people just want to listen to you they want to like feel like they're just listening in on a bit of a conversation yeah. um, they're not looking for a perfectly crafted message it falls a little bit flat so um, some clients will push me and make us submit the questions before they show up for the interview but very often I will just say rock up and we you know we work with really busy clients they don't actually have a lot of time so many are just really happy to show up and just be put on the spot they're usually used to public speaking so they're quite good at it and also the reality is if you know your business well and you know yeah. your customers well actually it's not that difficult and there's something about being put on the spot that really just helps to get out the it, it's a lot more real I don't have a better word for it really other than yeah. it just connects a lot more because it's 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 I don't know it's raw right that's yeah. that's you know, I know the word authentic is a bit of a buzzword, but it is true. Yeah. Because I think I was put off like video for so long because I thought I have to be perfect. I'm not an expert, you know, public speaker. I go off in tangents. My brain is like, psh, psh, psh. Um, <laughs> and I just thought, no, I can't do it. I'm not polished, you know. And today you can see I've got my my literally my red neck, the nervous energy. Yeah. But that's not for me. But I do think it's quite inspiring when you see people who are actually modeling true. <laughs> Like I have yeah. the last few weeks, you kind of go, well, if they can do it, I can do it. And I think yeah. um, we are sick of seeing perfect people. And I, I literally, I had a, a personal branding photo shoot done last week. I haven't shared really a lot of the pictures yet because I wanted to look like me uh, yeah. and, you know, the, the, the real me. Whereas the last photos that are on my LinkedIn now, they're nearly four years old and I was a slimmer then and a younger then so I kind of thought you know what it's time to actually be real and get a few lines showing because I'm in my 40s and most of my clients are in my 40s and 50s so there's no point looking like an airbrushed 30 year old <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and, and it actually gives you freedom when you are yourself as well because these new pictures are me and I'm kind of like yeah take yeah. it or leave it and they will actually unless I drastically change in the last few years they will be up for another few years but I think yeah. You just have to be yourself. And when you're yourself, that's how people connect with you. Um, really? I'm, I'm not a super formal person. Anyone who knows me and anyone who's worked with me will probably know the odd little curse will slip out. Uh, <laughs> I am well, it? It's not being real and being authentic with you, isn't it? It's yeah. interesting because I think there's been a shift, particularly going through the, the COVID pandemic and this lockdown period and we see um, because many people have been forced online. And if you think about the early days of lockdown, where even we were watching the news and these news reporters were in their own homes and you're seeing, you know, their messy bookshelves behind them or whatever. And something about going through that experience means that we focus less on, I, I just don't think we care that much anymore about things being so polished. I think we're more accepting, almost expect, expectations are lower actually. Um, 
and we want to see a little bit more. We want to connect with people. We're missing that human connection. We want that connection. So we don't want to see, you know, you in a perfectly whatever green room. We want to see that you're a real person, a human that we can actually connect with. So, yeah, I, I don't get overly concerned with, I don't know, airbrushing for example yeah yeah and I, I look back because I remember when I had the photos taken the lady said to me you don't want it too airbrushed do you and I was like yes I do yeah. <laughs> I want these gone whereas now I'm uh, there's going to be a tiny bit of airbrush and I'm not going to lie but they're they're more me and I was just as you were chatting there I was thinking about that guy I can't remember was it on Sky News like about six months ago do you remember yeah. his kid called in like at yeah. the time that was like oh my god this has yeah. happened and just think what has happened since then my god the world has gone crazy but oh, it's amazing right like now we love we love that story like, Why? Because because it makes all over the news a kid came into the room wow do you know what I mean it's so funny like how we've yeah. evolved but I was totally. gonna say I've actually stuck up a new banner yeah <laughs> And it's about oh. your a million days initiative so do you want to tell us a little bit about what that involves what it's all about yeah of course so um basically we are what we call a business for good um and what that means is we have social impact built into the agency so for every good thing that happens in the agency something good happens in the world and back in 2017 I discovered the 2030 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals they had been around a couple of years I think they were 2015 is when they launched but I, I really came across in 2017 and completely resonated with them because I thought you know what now there's these 17 goals that globally we're all trying to achieve to help minimize some of the world's biggest problems and the huge problems right like no poverty to get to a point where there's no poverty where there's equal opportunity where everybody has access to clean drinking water there's you know 17 of the biggest world problems are on that list i thought it was amazing and the reason i loved it so much is they've broken it down into these really i think achievable uh, things that we can all do to support. So I thought, okay, I'm a tiny business. Um, how do we, how can we contribute to this? Um, and I've actually partnered with a business called B1G1. They're amazing. And I'll tag them in um, after this live has finished um, to help me to deliver that. We launched a campaign, which is called 1 million days. And so what us here at Brand Active have done is we have committed to providing 1 million days of human rights workers wages access to education, access to business training, um, and clean drinking water, shelter, and food by 2030 in line with those goals. So it's a pretty big ambition. Um, we've obviously had the campaign running for almost three years now. And I think we've just, we're almost hitting 160,000 days that we have provided. Um, we've got another nine years to hit our 1 million target. Um, but essentially, yeah, that's that's the campaign. So it's a little micro impact. So for example, when we sign a new client, we provide a day's worth of human rights workers wages. Um, when we finish a website project, we provide two days of uh, business training to women in developing countries. Um, for every 30 day contract we complete, we give 30 days access to clean drinking water to girls at risk. Um, as you can see up on the screen there, um, when somebody uses the content waterfall hashtag, the hashtag the content waterfall, we provide access to reading materials to, to at-risk girls in Cambodia. So um, essentially what I try to do is every tiny little thing that happens within the business, if we can link it to just even the minuscule tiny little impact for good, then we're all moving in a better direction. And um, yeah, it's something that we love doing here. Um, my team love it, our clients really enjoy it. Um, and yeah, I guess it's it's a way of focusing on something that's a little bit bigger than yeah. the day-to-day -day activity of running a business. Or it sets our agency, I suppose, apart from just focusing on revenue. Um, there's a bigger social impact. Yeah, it's exciting. I love it. I think that's amazing. And I love the fact that you are a small business owner and you've like taught outside the box and you're kind of showing that we can all do it. You know, you don't have yeah. to be a big corporation. And I think we're in an age really where people buy purpose-led businesses. It's not like yeah. it's all about the profit. You have to be giving back in some way to your community and helping others. Um, so I absolutely love it. And I'm going to look up uh, about the 2030 um, UN. UN yeah. yeah, look it up and see how I can incorporate that into my business. Because 
I think when people are working with you, not only are they going to get you know amazing service with your content waterfall or any of your marketing help, they're actually helping you know the greater good as well. And I think that's yeah. really important. And we all need to be thinking like this and you know giving back and paying it forward. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're a business owner watching today or an employee watching today. We can all pay it forward in some way. So yeah. I'm quickly looking at all the comments. And thank no, you so much for you as well. Oh. Yeah, no, it's really good because the thing is, you know, you, it's not like you have to make a massive financial commitment. It's more yeah. about like if you can align it with a business practice, you're only giving as much as you're getting, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, it really is. It, it's, you know, our clients do love it. I'd say it's amazing for the team. You know, I think working within the, we, we make some little funny, quirky jokes about it sometimes in the sense that like if we've got a project we're working on and it's not going to plan or, you know, someone's a bit of a pest to work with that we can say you know what we just need to get through the end of this project and then a yeah. woman in east africa receives two business days two train you know two days of business training and that can just help you be like right bit of perspective here actually um we can kind of push through this you know pesty pesky client <laughs> Yeah, um, we've all had them. We've all had them. <laughs> Don't worry. Most of them are lovely, but there's always yeah. the odd one that pushes. Yeah. Occasional, occasionally slip in. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's great that you have that and you think, do you know what? It's worth it in the end. So I'll push on through sack client. But we're <laughs> good and help the world really so you've you blow my mind we're nearly at the half we've got three more minutes so we're nearly at the half 11 mark but i i'm sure like let me know in the comments if stacy has blown your mind where her content waterfall <laughs> and also how she's giving back um with her initiative i think it's amazing and it actually ties in nicely with my guest next week katie newman who's going to be talking about finding your why and your purpose and purpose led yeah, yeah, and I think it, it is so important because years ago we kind of bought brands, didn't we? We just consumed the products and services and we didn't really think about whether the company was doing any social good. We just wanted the product yeah. and service. Now it's, it's a lot changed. more, isn't it? It's changed. Yeah. The whole kind of marketing landscape has changed and it's all about people buying people, what they store yeah. stand for, their stories, their why, um, you know, what good are they trying to kind of put out there in the world? And it's the ones who aren't kind of embracing that purpose-led mentality who will fall behind. Um, yeah. So by giving, you're actually going to get it's the law of reciprocity isn't it really by you yeah. you're going to help all these people people will be more invested in working with you because they know you're going to help them give them shed loads of content <laughs> and you're going to be doing amazing as well yeah I'm, I'm just going to be fancy and try my ticker before we end this off <laughs> nice. a blatant if anyone needs LinkedIn help get in touch so I feel a bit like the news with the ticker going yeah on. I like it it's good so I think it's one of the, I just saw a comment come in around, you know, whether we should be focusing on, you know, fear, fearful tactics. Yeah, I think um, perhaps I didn't explain that that well in the sense that we don't want to just completely focus in on, you know, negative problems and, and here's the fear of you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. It's not really about that. It's more about thinking about what is the motivation for actually wanting to purchase your service or your product and figuring out um, it's it's about using the same language that your customers are using. So if they would say, you know, I'm, I'm just feeling overwhelmed and stressed, then you could use that in your marketing. If you're a coach that helps somebody to break through that sort of um, that problem, you know, so it's, it's, it's mimicking the language, I suppose, that people have in their problems and their whatever. And I guess the other thing that I've kind of seen popped up a little bit is like, you know, how many times should you be talking about the same thing by using the content waterfall? Because, you know, you're repeating content all the time. And it's actually really funny because this is a question that comes up all the time. And it's why often I'm talking about the familiarity principle and the mere exposure effect, which it's absolutely fascinating, which because it's a psychological phenomenon whereby people trust brands they see more often. Yeah. So it actually is based on no logic whatsoever, other than the more you see something, the more you yeah. like it, the more you trust it. Um, and what is, is super important to remember when you're following this process is that people do need to be exposed to you multiple times. They're not going to see something two or three times and make a decision. 
they need there's a the sort of methodology of like 7 11 4 like people need to have 11 interactions with your brand before they will actually make a purchase decision so I, and i suppose the other part of it very quickly is algorithms right so if you're talking about doing this on social just because you've posted 12 things it doesn't mean i see all 12 of them as a follower of yours I actually probably see a very tiny percentage. So actually you need to be communicating the same message over and over and over again to help your audience understand what your offer is, what you do and how you do it. I completely agree because people say to me all the time, did you see my post on LinkedIn? And I'm thinking, well, firstly, I've got over 8,000 connections. So <laughs> I don't see everything on the feed, but like you say, not everybody sees it with the algorithm so it's worth sharing it again and again so even like yeah. it, today i posted yesterday i post this morning you don't know who's going to see what so don't feel bad saying it again and again because it's not i can't remember who said this quote but it's not you know when it comes to business it's not the best business that will win it's the best promoted business so it's the visibility it's it's how yeah. how much are you in front of your audience you know you need that familiarity principle you need to be visible and it needs to be clear people need to have heard it and understand what it is that you're offering in order to take an action um so don't be fancy with your language just get in there and give it to them straight yeah. um and just you know they need that how many or how we're so busy how often do we need the reminder they're like i want that product or i want that service and i'm oh i'm busy i'm distracted by something else and then you see it again and you're like oh god yeah i've got to do that yeah. and then you forget and then you need you need that constant exposure to actually be like right i need to to go ahead and say yes so don't be afraid of, of saying the same thing over and over again. Yeah, I completely agree. And it's something I've had to get over as an introvert because I kind of cringe and it's like, oh, I'll do it again and again and again. But you have to, and you have to be visible. If you're a business owner like me, who's an introvert, you have to just put yourself out there and get over it and grin and bear it. And I promise it becomes easier, but you have to be out there. Otherwise, you don't have, you're not going to have a business. You're going to have a hobby because nobody knows yeah. you're amazing. Your clients know you're amazing when you get them. But if you're not shouting about it or sharing how you can I can't find you. Yeah. And I loved what you said about the language. So it's not like fear mongering. And that's what used to hold me back. I just thought I don't want to touch on people's pain points. But I actually attended a session um, this year and it was a lady called Tam and she talk talked about tapping into your testimonials. So like you've said already, Stacey, your clients will have already said it. So you can look to the testimonials you've got yeah. as a business owner. And they for me, they say, I was daunted by LinkedIn, I was confused, I was overwhelmed, my profile was haphazard. So I can actually put those words back out there. They're not mine, they're somebody else's and then somebody yeah. will resonate with them. And I never did that until this year and I still haven't done it. But what I did do was I've curated all of my testimonials into one doc and I'm starting to put them throughout my website and I am gonna to start to use them in my marketing. Um, I need someone like you and I'm sure lots of people need your help, Stacey, you know, cause I just think the, the sound of you kind of me giving you an hour's worth of content and you doing that for me is amazing. I just think, mm -hmm. I know you talked about clients come back once a month. I think if I had 170 pieces of content, I would, that would be me for the year. I would be delighted. <laughs> I think your service is amazing. And I would oh, definitely urge you. everyone, check out Stacey, check out her book, Get Online, because I think it can help a lot of people because I get blocked when it comes to content. I'm more about profile optimization and connection i'm a bit oh what do i put out there as well but this has been so inspiring stacy and i can see you know, there's other people saying they love the giving back initiatives well done thanks penny oh, thank you. yeah and mara is saying loves your ideas and the social aspect oh, um, thank you, mara. but thanks everyone we're kind of we've gone a little bit over because it was so good i didn't want to cut her off she's brilliant <laughs> thank you everyone who has come today and the next one it will be similar like i just thought stacy's brilliant and the, the lady next week is brilliant and i've met them all during lockdown um, and i've seen them all do presentations so the next one will be next 11 with katie newman we'll be chatting about purpose led so that's it guys happy hump day happy coffee day <laughs> and yeah. thank you stacy for being such an amazing um guest I'm going to go into the comments later on on LinkedIn and come back to anyone who's posted in there. So be patient. I will be in there soon. But thank amazing. you so much, everyone. And thank you, Stacey. You've been amazing. Thanks, Jennifer. Appreciate it. See you soon. Thank you. Bye, guys. Nice.